What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. We're starting more seeds today. Today is going to be the cold weather crops and the early spring crops. So let's get started. So glad I got a haircut. A lot of you guys were saying, hey Luke, your hair is getting pretty long, time for a haircut, and I agree. Got my haircut and hopefully you all like it better than the long shaggy version that it was. But if you didn't care, great, I don't either. As long as it's not in my eyes, I could care less because I got better, I got bigger things to worry about. So like where I'm gonna put all these plants. Uh, but today, like I said, we're gonna be starting our cool and cold weather crops. And it brought up a question uh, in, two or three videos ago about the difference between cool uh, cool and cold weather crops as well as warm weather and uh, soil, or warm weather, warm soil, and summer crops. There's quite a few differences here, but they're pretty much all broken down into two main categories, cool and cold weather crops, and then warm, uh, warm weather, warm soil, and summer crops they can be bundled into two separate categories there. So spring weather, fall weather, I consider those cool and cold weather zones, or cool and cold weather times. Um, those are times when you can plant lettuce, kale, broccoli, cabbage. They'll all kind of fall into different categories. Some will overlap multiple. Some are cold weather crops that will grow perfectly fine as a cool weather crop as well. Whereas things like spinach is a cold weather crop exclusively, and it does not really do well in cool weather because after a certain point, it does begin to bolt. And so you have many of these crops that are just kind of all intermixed. And that's why when we plant them out into the garden, we know that we're gonna plant them in anything above 32 degrees because we move them outside after the risk of frost is over. And so since all of these cool and cold weather crops can grow in uh, 32 degrees and up, I'm fine with that. And I personally make the decision to just lump them all together and grow them all the same because some might not grow, but they're not going to die either. That's the real difference is that cold weather crops will grow in cold weather and they're not going to die. Cool weather crops, will uh, they won't die, but they just won't grow. And then when cool weather arrives, which is anything above 45 degrees, 45 to about 60 degrees is, is considered cool weather they're going to continue growing. So they'll just kind of stay in the ground and they'll just say, all right, well, I'll just hang out here and keep it, uh, just, I'll, just, I'll just keep it chill until uh, the cool weather comes and then the cool weather comes and they're like, okay, let's start growing now. And those are things like lettuces, um, uh, cabbages, broccolis, things like that. Those are your cool weather crops. Then you have crops like warm weather, warm soil, and summer crops. I bundle all of these together as well because pretty much anything above 50 or anything above 60 degrees is considered warm weather and warm soil. The difference lies in that things like beans, right? Beans require warm soil to germinate. It might be 60 degrees outside, but the soil itself is not 60 degrees. And if you have cold soil, things like beans and corn are warm soil crops. The weather doesn't really matter outside, but the soil temperature itself is required for adequate germination. And therefore, I tend to wait until the soil is warm, this, uh, the air is warm, and that way I can move out things like beans, tomatoes, peppers, squashes, without having to worry about breaking these down into separate categories. It's just a whole lot harder than it really has to be. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully I broke that down in a way that is understandable. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of confusion and it causes a lot of concern, but gardening does not have to be as complicated as people make it out to seem. Um, so what are we gonna be starting today? Well, we're gonna be starting, like I said, we're gonna be starting all of our cool and cold weather crops. These are things like Swiss chard, kale, cabbage, broccoli, um, uh, that's about it in terms of those. Um, but then we're also gonna be starting some more summer crops that 
are just, they don't require as much time to get growing. Things like basil, um, things like uh, dill, stuff like that, that grows relatively quickly. So I don't wanna start them when I started all my other stuff. Otherwise they'd already be like a foot tall by the time I moved them outside and they'd be stressed. So I don't need to start them that early, which is why I'm starting them now. So those are gonna be started as well. So I figured, you know what, bring you all along. Let's get these, let's get these growing. And that should pretty much be it for all of the stuff that we're starting indoors. Um, the final question we did have is, Luke, there's a lot of stuff that you still have remaining. Why aren't you going to start them indoors? The reason is because the stuff that's remaining either is I have to directly sow them outside in the ground because they don't transplant well. Things like radishes, carrots, beets, they don't transplant well at all. Um, corn, beans, all kind of in that same category. You might as well just start them directly into the ground. And then there are things like, uh, like squashes, cucumbers, melons, pumpkins, they get huge really quick. I don't prefer to start these inside because they get so big that they're gonna take up all the space that I have and they're space hogs. So I'd rather start them outside in little pots when the weather is nice and I can just transplant them into the garden when the time's ready. That's personally what I do and that way if they wanna start growing huge leaves and start trailing all over the place before the beds are prepped and ready to go, they can do so and the sunlight can provide all the light they need to grow because, uh, because they're outside at that point. So that's why I leave a lot of those crops till the very end. Um, and then things like lettuce, you might be wondering, well, Luke, I thought lettuce was a cool uh, cold weather crop. It is, but we direct sow our lettuce high density style. And for those of you that have not seen that video, I'll make sure to link it in the description box uh, below because it's very important because starting seeds indoors does not allow you to high density sow them outside because the spacing is just not possible when you have cells like you do inside. So with that out of the way, let's get going. When it comes to really small seeds, a couple tricks here that I've learned throughout the years from a lot of mistakes that I made. Number one, dump seeds out into your hand you can tap out, you can use the tapping method over top of your tray uh, where you're putting your seeds, but sometimes you get 10 seeds and once the seeds drop into the hole, it is impossible to get them out. And then you spend time thinning out more and you also waste more seed. A whole lot easier to dump in your hand first, especially if they're small seeds. Second thing that I see that uh, I also made the mistake of is <laughs> when you, um, when you, have the, when you have the packet here, sometimes we have a tendency just to rip it right open. Well, what can happen is, uh, this, this is it right here, check this out. So what can happen is, see how the seeds kind of get stuck up in that crease right there? Well, what can happen is if you open it up over top, the seeds can drop out, and then let's say you go and thin what you thought was a, you know, let's say a basil sprouts, and next to it sprouts another basil. Let's say you thin the wrong basil because the basil seed popped out and hopped out from that little crevice when you open up the packet and then you have two plants of the same type and the other one you really wanted got thinned out and, and pretty much uh, deleted from your tray because of a simple mistake. What I always recommend doing is when you open them, open them off of your tray or open them over your hand. I prefer to open them just over top of the table so any seeds that pop out like that one just did they don't end up in your tray and then i've got the seeds i actually haven't had to dump any seeds out these are just the ones that are attached to the to the little crease there and that happens that is uh yeah that's just very common and i'm just going to keep doing this nothing special here yet as you can see same thing as all the other seeds the, you know, the, the method in which I start seeds is, is exactly the same. That's why I always tell people, yeah, you wanna see me start all this stuff, that's fine, but don't be surprised if it looks redundant and nothing changes from crop to crop. They're all started exactly the same way. Another thing you can do is you can give a really good firm tap and sometimes that'll help. In this case it didn't, but I sometimes will we'll find that uh, the seeds will drop down from that crease if I give them a good firm tap, which helps to reduce the amount of 
the amount of seeds getting stuck up there. All right, so as you can see, nothing different. I'm gonna finish this tray out and then I'm going to, uh, and then I'll, I'll show you all what it looks like when it's done. So there we go. That is the rest of the plants that need to be started indoors early. And to be honest, I'm quite shocked. For whatever reason, I thought we'd have a whole lot more space being taken up. And I, I planned for 16 flats worth of space. That's why all these tables are here. And that's why I made all this space between the grow lights was for this. But turns out I only needed four flats to get the job done. And I'm kind of shocked about that. Now this is not, by, by no means is this the entire garden. We actually have all of these seeds that either need to be started directly in the ground or need to be started outside because they take up space and grow really quickly. Um, things like squash, melons, uh, cucumbers, zucchinis, watermelons, you name it, stuff like that. Those are also kind of in that category and so they still have to be started outside. So this is the rest of our garden here. And total, we're looking right around 600 different varieties of crops, which is just awesome. But for whatever reason, I thought I'd take up a lot more space and I really didn't need all that extra space. So what I want you all to do is comment in the comments box below what I should do with all this extra space. I've got so much space here. I've got enough space for 12 more flats. So I can do stuff for maybe a plant sale, friends, family, I don't know. Just throw me ideas. I'd love to see what you have in mind for all this extra space because it's so beautiful. I really don't wanna waste it. I definitely do not like wasting space. I'm a man of efficiency and this right now is very inefficient with how much space is being wasted. Um, I don't need the space uh, yet. I don't need any more space because I don't need to up pot these, these tomatoes or peppers. The rest of the stuff will pretty much be good to go until uh, transplanting time. So they don't need to be up potted at all, which is great. So I'm, I'm left with 12 extra flats worth of space that I have unaccounted for. And uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments box below. But it'll be really exciting to see how this garden progresses. And it's definitely been a fun journey so far. It's been one that's been going off without a hitch. I've really had great germination rates. Everything is sprouting well. And, uh, and the weather is warming up perfectly. I think we're actually going to be getting in the garden early this year. I mean, hey, knock on wood, cross your fingers. But at least here uh, where we're located in Michigan, I've... Uh, I've never seen a season going this well in about probably 10, 15 years. It's been a really long time, but we're in a warming cycle already. Our days are already kind of averaging uh, low 40s to mid 40s. Our lows are in the high 20s, which is just great. Um, we're only a few degrees away from freezing. And, uh, and we're not even the first day of spring yet. That's still, I think, a day or two away, which you betcha we're going to do a first day of spring episode. So make sure to Stay tuned for that. But uh, it's just been going off super well. So I'm really excited about it. Hopefully you all are as well. And that's all I got for you today. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope that you found this video informative or inspirational or informational or entertaining. I hope you found it something because that's why I do them. If you did enjoy it for whatever reason, let me know by giving it a like. Uh, it really helps me out. It helps spread this video around to more people that could use the, uh, the video. And also, make sure to subscribe if you're not yet already. It really, truly is going to be one of the best decisions you've ever made. We're going daily. We got so much content coming out. I'm just cramming my schedule full of filming and, and great informative videos to get you all growing big or going home. I'm so excited about this year and it's gonna be a fun journey. So make sure you subscribe so you can check us out tomorrow when we upload a video and, uh, and every day after that. As long as, you are, uh, as long as you guys are happy and pleased, I'm happy and pleased and I, and I always read the comments. So if you enjoyed, also let me know in the comments box below what you enjoyed about the video because it, uh, it definitely helps kind of cater uh, more videos that you would enjoy. So that's how I use the feedback. So definitely use that. If you enjoyed it, let me know. And as always, we'll catch you all in tomorrow's episode. All right, grow bigger, go home, guys. Catch y'all later. See ya, bye.